as standard 8 class was studying the eating habits of animals in the school compound. They recorded their observation about four animals, P, Q, R, and S, as shown in the diagram below. We have P, Q, R, and S. Which one of the animal is omnivorous? When we are categorizing animals according to their feeding habits, then we can group them into three groups. One, we have the herbivores. Herbivores, these are animals that feed on plant materials or the vegetables. Also, we have the second group of animals who are carnivores. Carnivores, this one feeds on flesh. Then we have the third group of omnivores. And the omnivores, these are mixed diet. In other words, they feed on both flesh and vegetables. Since we are told to identify the one that is omnivorous, that feeds on both fresh and vegetables, then looking at the, our diagram, we have eat insects, this is flesh, leaves, these are vegetables, and then we have seeds there. So here we have animal P. Animal P feeds only on insects. This one feeds on insects only. Then we have uh, animal Q. Q, it is this animal. It feeds on that circle, that is insects, and also it will feed on the other one here, which are it eats leaves. So this one eats, feeds on insects plus leaves. Then we have R. R, it is here, feeds on leaves and seeds. S feeds on seeds alone. Since we want to identify the one that feed on a mixed diet, the animal should be Q, since Q feeds on both flesh, those are insects, and then leaves. During a nature walk, standard six pupils saw a plant like the one drawn below. They also saw a bird whose beak was like the one shown above in the same place. The most likely place where the plant and the bird were seen was in we have plants which are adapted in different places. Some of the plants are adapted in dry areas. Others are adapted in wet areas. So looking at the plant there, it is found in wet areas. Looking at the type of the roots and the leaves, they are broad so that now they can lose a lot of water. Looking at the roots there, the roots are there just to provide support. They are not deep enough. Then looking at the bird here, the bird has long, broad, and serrated beak that is meant to filter food from water. It has the bird has long flat 
serrated big to filter food from water so the most likely place where the bird and the plant could have been seen it was in the lake a group of pupils from Dege primary school observed birds near their school they classified the bird as shown in the chart below whereby we have birds they can be either walking swimming or flying for walking we have ostrich and n for swimming we have pelican and duck then flying we have oak and pelican in which part of the chart shown below can the pelican be placed when you look at pelican pelican is both a swimming bird and also flying bird so mean that it has to occupy two circles so since now we have uh, swimming the swimming bird the bird that swims here are we have L and O they swim then we have flying we have L will fly because of this circle and also M will also fly but then when it comes to walking walking here it is only O that walks so when you look at pelican pelican can be classified as L whereby L can swim this is swimming and also it can fly it is occupying only this circle and this circle so L it is where now pelican can be placed the diagram below shows the teeth of a snake the teeth are adapted for when you look at the snake snake is among the animals that feeds on flesh it feeds on other animals for those animals that feeds on other animals they usually have long canines the canines are there one for holding or grasping the prey they in other words they are for catching they catch grass and hold the prey so that now it cannot escape so they are long so that now they can penetrate the flesh of that prey also they are the same same canines that are used for tearing they tear the flesh from the prey <coughs> so therefore when you look at the snake the snake has these long canine tooth here they are there for grasping they are there for grasping so the correct answer there is a 
which one of the following beaks or buds is correctly matched with the food the bird is adapted to eating when you look at the bird the birds do not have teeth what they have is that they usually have beaks the type of the beak that a bird have tells us what the bird feeds on so we have the birds according to their beaks can be categorized into four groups one we have the grain eaters these are birds that eat grains when you look at them they usually have short They usually have short, straight, strong, big. Then we have the fresh eaters. These are birds that feed on flesh. When you look at their big, it usually have they are they are usually short they are usually short strong curved and sharp for tearing the flesh from the prey then the other group is a group of nectar feeders nectar feeders these are birds that feed on nectar when you look at them they usually have very long slender beak to prop nectar from the flowers they usually have long slender carved beak for probing nectar from flowers last category of these we have the filter feeders and these are the birds that filters food from water they usually have long flat broad but serrated beak the serrated part looks like a saw so it is broad long and the key word is serrated big adapted for filtering food from water looking at the birds that we have been provided here the one that is correctly must it is b b it feeds on fish it has long flat and the part here is serrated so that now it can filter food from water therefore the correct answer there is b nema observed some animals in a nearby bush she classified the animals as shown below we have animals eat roots eat insects eat grains for roots we have pig squirrel eat insect we have camellia spider and then eat grains we have squirrel and ostrich in which part of the chart below would the squirrel fit when you look at the squirrel the squirrel usually feeds on grains 
and also roots but it does not feed on insects so using our circle or our circle grab it is easy to identify the one because our concern it is roots and grain so for those which eat grain we have P they eat roots and also we have this one which is P P also eats grain so squirrel could be classified as P uh, in the group of P the animal that feeds on roots and grain when you look at S as it feeds on roots and insects when you look at R R feeds on both and the Q feeds on insects and grain so since we wanted the one that feeds on roots and grain which is the squirrel the answer is P which one of the following animals is correctly matched with its adaptation adaptations are mechanisms that animals have so that now they can survive in a particular environment they are just mechanisms these mechanisms maybe they help the animals to hide from their predators also help them to get food others they help them to survive or to withstand the temperatures or to move in the areas where they are found looking at oak oak feeds on flesh looking at the, its beak the beak of a oak should be short strong carved and sharp so that now it can tear the flesh from the prey looking at the frog frogs are amphibians amphibians do not have scales what they have is that they have moist body looking at the prey mantis and chameleon they change their color this color changing helps them to hide from their predators therefore they do change their color so that now they survive in the environment in which they are found so the one that is correctly matched there is the praying mantis it changes its color so that now it can hide or protect itself from their predators which one of the following diagrams represents the beak of a fresh eating bird when you look at birds birds do not have teeth instead of teeth they usually have beaks the type of the beak is the one that tells us what the bird feeds on according to the type and the size type and the size of the beak birds can be groups can be grouped into four groups one we have grain eaters grain eaters 
this one feeds on grains and nuts when you look at their beaks their beaks are short their beaks are short they are strong and straight so that now they are able to pick the grains from the ground then we have two we have the fresh eaters these are birds that feed on flesh when you look at their beaks their beaks are also short but they are curved and sharp so they look like this so they are short curved and sharp so that now they can tear the flesh the other group of birds according to their beaks we have the nectar feeders nectar feeders they usually have long they have long curved slender beak so that now they can flop nectar from uh, from the flowers They have long, thin, slender, big. So since we want the bird that feeds on fl flesh, it is the bird that has this type of big, which is D. The thick layer of fat under the skin of a whale is for when you look at the whale dolphin all those are mammal they we call them the sea mammals All mammals, it is good to note that they have constant body temperature. Their temperature does not change with that of the surrounding. It remains constant despite the changes in the temperature in the environment in which they are found. Therefore, since the well is found in the water it has to maintain constant body temperature the layer of the fat under the skin it is there to generate it so that now it keeps it warm or it maintains war, uh, it maintains constant body temperature even if it is inside 
the water where the temperature keeps on changing so the correct answer there is keeping the body of the well warm the streamlined body of a fish is useful to it when it is when we are classifying animals we classify them according to their two things that is according to feeding and movement or locomotion so looking at the fish the fish usually have the streamlined body A fish just have the streamlined body. The streamlined body it is this part here that just looks like a wench. Just looks like a wench like this. This is a wench. So it has this kind of a streamlined body. For the fish to move in water, it needs to come up with an adaptation or it has some of the adaptation and one of the adaptation is that it has streamlined body. This streamlined body reduces friction of the fish and water during the course of movement apart from the streamlined body also the fish usually have the fins fins helps it to move forward upward and also to prevent it from rolling in the course of movement also it has what you call the swimming blunder which usually contain air and the air helps the fish to maintain an equal or uniform depth in the course of swimming so the stimulate body is very useful to the fish while in motion or while it is moving the diagram below shows the type of arrangement of teeth in a certain mammal which food is the animal adapted to feed when we are classifying um, animals or mammals we can classify them according to two categories one of the category it is the feeding habit under the feeding habit we have the herbivores Ambivores are those animals or mammals that feed on plant materials. We have two omnivores Omnivores are those 
animals that feed on mixed diet or they feed on flesh and vegetables or plant materials then the third category are carnivores carnivores they feed on flesh the feeding habits for us to study the feeding habit of these animals then we have to look at the jaw their teeth structure looking at the diagram there the teeth structure represent um, ambiform it is an ambiform because looking at the front jaws the lower and the upper the lower jaw here has both incisors and the canines but the upper jaw here it has what you call the hard pad it does not have teeth immediately after the canines on the lower jaw we have this this space here this gap here the gap it is called diastema the diastema it is a large space that provides space for holding and for turning materials during chewing since these animals they chew cards when they are resting the diastema provides that space for holding and turning the materials during the process of chewing so the animal is an herbivore so herbivores as we have seen here they feed on plant materials or vegetables looking at our answers there we have is so the answer are the leaves they are plant materials vegetation the diagram below represents a food of a certain bird the bird most likely feeds on looking at the food the food has webbed part the webbed part prevents the bird from sinking in the mud The bird is likely to be found in places near legs or rivers. Also it can be found in the swampy areas. Mostly these areas usually have small animals. like fish we can have frogs toads and other small animals that lives in water looking at now the food of this bird the bird was likely to feed on either fish frog or toad looking now at our answers there we find now 
we have snakes, chicks, rats, and then fish. So the answer is fish. Since it is adapted on filtering food from water. The diagram below shows the beak of a certain bird. The bird most likely feeds on. When you look at the birds, birds do not have teeth but they have beaks. The size and the shape or the type of the beak tells us what the bird feeds on. Using that categorization, then we can categorize birds into four groups. One, we have the filter feeders. Filter feeders, these are birds that filters food from water. So when you look at these birds, they usually have long, flat, broad, and in most cases they have serrated parts. So they have such a birds they include ducks they filter food from water others we have the nectar feeders and these are birds that feed on nectar from the flowers they usually have long slender Carved beak, long, slender, carved beak. So they feed on nectar. Then we have the flesh eaters. Flesh eaters they usually have short, sharp. Carved big. Short, strong, carved, big, for tearing fresh. Then the other one, we have the grain eaters, which they have short, straight, strong, big. Looking at the big in the diagram, it is long and broad, and somehow serrated at the center so the bird is mostly likely to feed on fish it is likely to be a filter feeder the chart below shows classification of some animals we have animal can be divided into carnivores and ambivores for the carnivores, we have strong curved claws and short claws. We have oak and kingfisher. For herbivores, we have complete hoops and split hoops. We have zebra and cow. Which of the following were used in the classification? 
when you look at the classification that was used there we have two levels we have the levels of carnivores and om, om, uh, herbivores it is good to note that when we are classifying animals mostly we classify them according to their feeding the type of food that they feed on so according to feeding we have now the carnivores and herbivores so first they were classified according to their feeding habit as we go down here we have the second classification here whereby we have carnivores that can have strong curved claws and short claws then here herbivores they have complete hooves and split hooves then we are given example the kind of categorization that was used there is the type of the feet those with curved sharp claws like the oak they use their claws to hold on their prey so they were classified according to their feet looking at the zeb zebra it has complete hoop cow it has a split hoop kingfisher it has a short claws when you look at our answers the class body covering so here we don't have body covering it is the type of feeding food eaten and the type of feed so the correct answer there is b that is food eaten that are carnivores and herbivore and then the type of feed that will include one with claws strong curved claws others with split hooves all those are types of feed the chart below shows classification of some animals we have animal can be divided into carnivores and herbivores for the carnivores we have strong curved claws and short claws we have oak and kingfisher for herbivores we have complete hooves and split hooves we have zebra and cow which of the following were used in the classification when you look at the classification that was used there we have two levels we have the levels of carnivores and om, om, uh, om it is good to note that when we are classifying animals mostly we classify them according to their feeding the type of food that they feed on so according to feeding we have now the carnivores and herbivores so first they were classified according to their feeding habit as we go down here we have the second classification here whereby we have carnivores that can have strong curved claws and short claws then here herbivores they have complete hooves and split hooves then we are given example the kind of categorization that was used there is the type of the feet those with curved sharp claws like the oak they use their claws to hold on their prey so they were classified according to their feet looking at the zeb zebra it has complete hoop cow it has a split hoop kingfisher it has a short close
when you look at our answers the class fixed body covering so here we don't have body covering it is the type of feeding food eaten and the type of feed so the correct answer there is b that is food eaten that is carnivores and herbivores and then the type of feed that will include one with claws strong curved claws others with split hooves all those are types of feed chameleon shoots out its tongue too when you look at chameleon is one of the animals and animals they have adaptations adaptations that will make them get food move and also hide from their predators for chameleon it uses color it camouflages to hide from their predators also when you look at the chameleon it has a very long tongue the long tongue it is there to enable it to feed the tongue enables it to feed so it draws the tank to catch food such as insects therefore the work of the tank of the chameleon is to catch the food on a cold day most birds raise their feathers too birds are animals and since they are animals they have constant body temperature in other words they are warm branded their body temperature remain constant despite the changes in the temperature of the surrounding also during ash temperatures like cold days these birds usually react to the changes in the atmosphere they react by raising their feathers when they raise their feather they usually trap air in between them the air prevents the heat from their body from escaping so they are able to keep warm during that cold day so looking at the answers given there we'll find now they avoid they raise their feathers to avoid losing it from their bodies birds which feed on grains are big that are when you look at birds birds have beaks they do not have teeth the size and the type of the beak tells us what the bird feeds on according to 
this uh, categorization birds can be grouped into four groups whereby we have a grain eaters grain eaters they usually have short strong straight beaks which are adapted for picking grains then we have b we have flesh eaters french eaters they usually have short strong carved sharp beak these beaks are adapted for tearing fresh then we have see we have the next feeders nectar feeders usually have long slender carved beaks adapted for sucking nectar then we have the last group which is a group of field feeders and these are birds that filters food from water they usually have long broad serrated beak for filtering food from water so we want grain eaters grain eaters they usually have short or uh, strong short and straight beak that is short strong straight beaks for picking after the incubation period the chick comes out of the shell by so when you look at chicken they lay eggs they are part of animals animals that lay eggs after laying eggs they incubate them for 21 days that is the time the eggs they take before they hatch into chicks after the 21 days which is the incubation period for n then they chick inside the egg they crack the shell of the egg with their beaks and then they come out so that's the time we say now the n has arched the eggs so they come out of the shell by that is cracking the shell open using its beak that is b which one of the following statement about adaptation in animals is not correct? Adaptations are just mechanisms that animals have that makes them survive. Survive in the means that they get their food and how they reach that food. When we look at our 
statement that we have been given we have a cheetah up sharp cross curved cross to help them catch their prey when you look at cheetah cheetahs are carnivorous animals these carnivorous animals they usually have claws in their front legs or limbs this one helps them to catch their prey while on run then we have ingus 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 also are carnivorous birds and they usually have strong curved beaks and these strong curved beaks are for tearing flesh then when you look at see clockdal are so like teeth to help them grip their prey the so like teeth this one helps it to filter food from water in other word it helps it to separate food from water so it is wrong to say that crocodile have so like teeth to help them grip their prey family when we look at these snakes are fags to hold their prey family that is true their fangs are found in front of their mouth and they are there to enable the snake to hold family to the prey so that it does not escape so the statement that is not correct is the cro crocodile have so like teeth to help them grip their prey family the so like teeth just helps the crocodile to filter food from water the diagram below shows the beak of a certain bird the bird most likely feeds on when you look at the bird beak it is short it is also strong and straight such a beaks they are adapted for picking grain Therefore, the bird is likely to be a grain eater. Their beaks are different from those of fresh eaters. Since for the fresh eaters they are short, also they are strong but carved for adapted for tearing so when we look at the bird there the bird is adapted for picking of grains looking at our answer the correct answer is c grains The main reasons why the government conserves wildlife is to have when you look at the wildlife wild wildlife refers to animals and plants in their natural habitat The government usually conserves these two living things that is the plants and animals since animals and plants depend on one another animals will get oxygen from plants also they will get food from plants while the plants will get manure 
and the carbon dioxide to carry out photosynthesis from animals. The government usually conserves this so that now it imbalances the nature, so that each of these two can sustain each other or can depend on one another. Since if we kill more animals, the plants will lack carbon dioxide and they might end up drying. So the main reason why the government conserves wildlife is to balance the nature. The toothless gap in the lower jaw of herbivore is four. When you look at the herbivore, these are animals that feed on vegetable. They feed on vegetables or plant materials. These animals, when you look at their mouth, their front teeth, they have only teeth in their lower jaw that is they have incisors and canines in the lower jaw in the upper jaw they have hard pad that they use to cut these vegetable material. Immediately after the canines, we have a toothless gap there called diastema. The diastema is a space that helps the animal to hold the vegetable material and also help to turn or to provide the space for turning during the process of chewing. Therefore, the toothless gap is there to allow turning of the materials in the mouth for proper chewing. Looking at our answers there, the correct answer there is A, that is turning plant materials in the mouth for proper chewing. Which one of the following is a filter feeder? When you look at birds, birds are classified according to the size and the type of beak they have. According to the size and the type of the beak, then bird can be classified as A. Grain eaters. Examples of the grain eaters we have chicken, we have dove, we have weaver birds, etc. B. We have the flesh eaters these are birds that feed on flesh in g we have oak we have hole we have kites we have ingo then we have the nectar feeders They include the sunbird. Then lastly we have filter feeders. These one they include birds like ducks, flamingos, etc. Back to our question that requires us to identify the filter feeder. The correct filter filter there, it is the duck. 
duck is a good example of a feeder feed. birds which feed on nectar have when you look at nectar feeders or birds that feed on nectar their beaks are different from other types of beaks of other birds their beaks are usually long they are thin that's how their beaks looks like so to describe that beak the beak is usually long looking at it it is slender or you can talk of being thin so that now it can fit into the flowers it is curved so that now it can go into the flower so they have long slender curved beaks and this one enables it to suck the nectar from flowers so looking at our answer there the correct answer there is D that is long slender curved beaks which one of the following descriptions of beaks would be for a bird that most likely feeds on nectar when you look at nectar feeders These are birds that feed on nectar. When you look at the, their shape, type and size of their beak, you find out they usually have very long, slender or thin beak so they have long slender curved beak this beak is adapted for probing nectar from the flowers so they usually have long curved beak looking at our answers there the correct answer there is long curved slender beak which one of the following pairs consists of only animals that have webbed feet webbed feet is a characteristic of animals that walk or swim in water webbed is for animals that either swim or <coughs> wed in water such are animals they have webbed feet so that it enables them not to stick on demand therefore such animals that have such a adaptations include birds like duck also we have frog those two are known examples of animals that have webbed feet not forgetting about the toad so the duck the frog the toad they usually have webbed feet to enable them to walk or to wade in water this one as we have said it prevents them from sticking in the mud so our correct answer there is frog and the duck 
which one of the following pairs of birds have their beaks adapted to the same type of feeding when you look at the birds we classify birds according to their size and shape or type of the beak according to those categori categorization then we can have birds that feeds on grains we call them grain eaters examples of grain eaters we have things like chicken we have pigeon we have dub we have river birds then we have group 2 that is group of fresh eaters Fresh eaters, they are birds that feed on flesh, it includes oak, we have ingu, we have all, also kites, they are there. Then we have another group of nectar feeders, these nectar feeders include the sunbird and the arming birds then the last group is the group of field feeders these field feeders include birds like the ducks they are in that group so from that we can easily identify the ones that are in the same group and the ones that are in the same group are inku and oak inku and the oak they are in the group of fresh eaters so they have the same type and the size of the big Which one of the following pairs consists only of omnivorous animals? Omnivorous animals are animals that feed on a mixed diet. When I talk of mixed diet, it involves those animals that feed on flesh and vegetables or plant materials these animals they include animals like man chimpanzee pigs and also birds like n then we have another group of herbivores. These are animals that feed on vegetables only. Animals like cow, zebra, giraffe. can talk of elephant all those animals they feed on plant material then we have the other group of carnivores carnivores they feed on flesh animals like lion leopard Hena, all those animals they feed on flesh so they are carnivorous animals 
Since we are told to identify the omnivorous animals, omnivorous animals include man, chimpanzee, pig, and in that category. So we have chimpanzee and pig. Aina ear is carnivorous, crocodile ear is carnivorous, hippopotamus ear is herbivorous. So the correct answer there is chimpanzee and pig. Birds that have short, straight, and thick beaks are when you look at birds, birds we classify them according to their beaks since they do not have teeth. So their size, shape, and the type of the beak. tells us what the bird feeds on. Basing on that argument, we have four groups of birds. We have one, the filter feeders. These are birds that feed on food in water. They filter food from water. This bird, they usually have long, broad, serrated beaks. Then we have the fresh eaters. Fresh eaters, they are birds that feeds on flesh. When you look at them, they usually have short, strong, curved, big. The other group is the group of nectar feeders. Nectar feeders, they usually have long, slender, curved beak to probe nectar from the flowers. Then the last category is the category of grain eaters. Grain eaters, they usually have short, strong, straight beaks. They feed on grains. So here we need to uh, uh, birds that have short, straight and thick or broad beaks. These are the grain eaters. They have short, strong, straight, and thick beak for picking grains. So the correct answer there is D, that is the grain eaters. Which of the following are examples of herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores? We have mammals can be divided into three groups. We have herbivores. Herbivores, they are those animals that feed on vegetables or plant materials. These animals, they include animals like cow, Goat, sheep, zebra, hippopotamus, buffalo, etc. Then we have 
the other group of carnivores carnivores they feed on flesh such animals include lion we have leopard we have aina the crocodile and other many animals like cheetah they are also in that group then we have the group of omnivores all animals that feed on mixed diet they feed on both plant and flesh animals like man chimpanzee You can also talk of the pigs all those animals they feed on mixed diet so looking at the chart here we can easily now identify the one that is correctly uh, named so we have a we have a beaver's hippopotamus which is correct carnivore crocodile which is correct and omnivorous chimpanzee which is also correct so the correct answer here is a looking at the other answers here we have zebra is an herbivore lion is carnivore but vulture is a carnivore it is not an omnivore gorilla leopard is a carnivore aina is a carnivore then we have buffalo is an herbivore baboon is not a carnivore rhino is a herbivore so the correct one is hippopotamus crocodile and chimpanzee the diagram below represents a beak of a certain bird the bird represented is a when you look at the big the big is short it is also strong but curved at the tip the bird is likely to be a flesh eater then we have grain eaters grain eaters they usually have short strong but their beaks are straight so when you look at the beak cannot be a grain eater because it is carved at the tip here it is carved so it is not straight so it cannot be a grain Eater. Then we have the nectar feeders. They usually have they usually have long, slender, curved beaks. So looking at that description for nectar feeders this is not the big ear is not long it is not thin or slender and it is not that curved therefore the bird is a the bird is not a is not is not a nectar feeder so filter feeders on the other side they shall have long 
broad but their beaks are serrated they are serrated so that now they can separate food from water looking at our bird it does not have long broad serrated beak so the bird is likely to feed on fish the diagram below represents beaks of certain birds g and h the birds whose beaks are represented by g and h are when we look at the beaks of these birds they tell us what they feed on it can either be a fresh eater grain eater filter feeder or a nectar feeder looking at the bird or the beak of the bird labeled g g it has long slender carved beak it is adapted for feeding on nectar therefore it is called a nectar feeder looking at the bird labeled h it has long broad and serrated beak the birds that have serrated beaks they are adapted for filtering food from water and they are referred to as filter feeders so when we look at the beaks here we have g which is long when you look at it it is slender and it is curved so it is a nectar feeder look at h it is broad and long then the key part it is this part that looks like a saw is the one which we refer to as serrated it is serrated so that now it can allow the bird to filter food from water or to separate food and water since it feeds on that food found in water therefore our correct answer there is b whereby we have nectar feeder and filter feeder the diagram below shows a bird's beak the bird is likely to be a when you look at the beak the beak is long it is slender and curved the birds that have such a kind of beaks are nectar feeders this one is very different from others like grain eaters grain eaters they usually have short strong straight big adapted for picking grains then we have fresh eaters these are birds that feeds on flesh they shall have short strong and curved beak adapted for tearing flesh from the prey then finally we have the filter feeders
these field of feeders they shall have long broad serrated beaks they are adapted for filtering food from water therefore looking at the beak that is there it is for a nectar feeder or those birds that feeds on nectar which of the following animals move by flying and hopping we have when we start classifying animals we classify them according to their feeding and movement when we classify them according to movement then we can have the flying animals we can have the swimming and we have the one that leap and hop leaping and hopping when we have flying we have mostly birds birds move by flying swimming here we have all those animals that are found in water including fish crocodile and some of the sea mammal but we take fish as an example leap we have animals like toad frog kangaroo also cricket they'll move by leaping and hopping from one place to another then we have flying apart from birds flying also insects they fly insects insects like the grasshopper they will fly month it will fly cricket also it will fly from one place to another so the animal that moves by flying and hopping it is the cricket